In this video, we'll be overhauling the clutch in my Matchless G3L WD. In order to do this, we need to remove the chain case first. Now, I've made a separate video for that, so please go and follow that to get the chain case off and then come back here and we'll pick it up from where you left off. First job is to undo the clutch springs. Now, there's a special tool for this, but if you're too tight to buy one, uh, like me, then a pair of pincers will do. And once you've got the screw undone a little bit, you can use a flathead screwdriver in any case to undo it. So as you do undo each of these uh, nuts, you'll find that there's a spring underneath and then there's a metal cup which goes into the uh, spring plate uh, to hold everything steady. Remove everything and then you'll be able to take the spring plate off. Now a nice quick way to get the clutch plates out is to use a magnetic puller to pull away the blank pressure plates and then a little screwdriver to just get behind the friction plates. And using this method you can get everything out really quickly. Now note the order in which they come out. One of the plain pressure plates will be thicker than the other and depending on uh, what mark of clutch you've got this might be the last plate or the first place plate that you take out but just make a note of which it is, so you can put it back in the right order. Now by using a socket and by applying pressure to the rear brake pedal, you should be able to undo the clutch retaining nut. Underneath the nut, there'll be a washer. And now you'll see that I'm holding a magnetic tray underneath the clutch internals. And that's because behind the next bit, there are 24 roller bearings. And when they come loose, if you don't catch them, they'll roll all around the garage floor and have a party and you'll never find them. Here's a better view of the roller bearings now, the shiny round things you can see. Luckily for me, they stayed in. So now I'm removing the primary chain just by taking off the split link and then taking the chain off. Now the reason I'm doing this is so that I can take off the clutch basket, have a look at the back of it and check that the sprocket is in good condition. If all you're doing is replacing the clutch plates, you don't need to take this step. You can simply go uh, skip ahead in the video and start putting the new plates in. And by doing this really carefully, I've managed to get the clutch basket away with all the roller bearings and the magnetic tray underneath it so I catch every single one first time. Well, hopefully your clutch basket will be okay and the sprocket will be in good condition. If not, then replace it. And now we come to reassemble the clutch. First, we put on uh, the large washer stroke spacer that just fits over the axle there of the um, clutch main shaft, followed by another little spacer. And now, because the next thing we're going to do is put the roller bearings on, just apply a little bit of grease and this will help them to stick. Now when you put the roller bearings on, they're magnetic and they'll actually hold themselves onto the metal there. And if they don't, if they appear to push away, then remember they've got a north-south pole. So just turn them around and put them on the other way and it'll be fine. And uh, it looks physically impossible, but if you're careful as you do it, you'll easily be able to build up all 24 roller bearings 
in a nice neat circle. Once you've done that, then with great care, put the clutch basket over the whole arrangement. When that's neatly in place, there's a washer that goes over that to stop the roller bearings falling out. Now put the primary chain back on and do up that little clip so that the blunt end is pointing forward in the direction of rotation of the chain. Now we'll put the clutch in a basket on. This has got four bolts that go in from the back and they've got a little chamfer on them so just turn that so that it faces the inner circle so they won't rotate. And that will then just slip nicely into the middle of the clutch. And we'll replace the washer and the nut and then get them nice and tight. Now you might have a lock washer on yours, I didn't on my bike and it doesn't seem to be any the worse for it, but whatever you took out, put it back in the order in which you took it out. So my friction plates were worn almost down to the bone, so I bought some new ones from a mail order company in India, and they turned out to be absolutely brilliant. They do look different to the ones in the um, spares manual, and that's because I think I've got a post-war clutch. Uh, but I made sure they were the same shape as the ones that came out of the bike before I ordered them. Now I'm using petrol to clean up the pressure plates, which are going back in, and I'm stacking the plates so I get them in the order that I want them. The only really important thing being where the thick pressure plate goes, is it the first in or the last in? In my case, it was the first in because that's how it came out of the bike. And now I'm putting them back into the clutch basket and this should be quite a tight fit. There's little lugs around the circumference. There shouldn't be any room for them to lash about forward and back because if there is that will make a bit of a noise and you're going to need to get a new clutch basket if that's the case but mine were fine when you put the new clutch plates together the whole arrangement is going to be much thicker than the old one in my case the new clutch plates had a width two millimeters thicker than the old ones because of the difference in wear and we've got to address this by adjusting the clutch and that's because of the way the clutch works if you look into the centre of the clutch here, you'll see the operating rod. With my left hand out of view, I'm just going to gently pull the clutch lever in. When I do that, you will see the rod come out. And that's what pushes the spring plate and disengages the clutch. Now we'll put the spring pressure plate back on. So locate it so that the clutch rod just goes into the dimple right into the middle. Make sure that you've got the steel cups, in each, one in each of the four holes and then put the spring and its nut in and you can start with a flathead screwdriver because you get more leverage on this than any kind of special tool or pincers and get them in a little bit get all four in and then start to tighten them up and the idea is that we're going to tighten them fully home so as far as they will go and then undo them four complete turns anti-clockwise when you do that then the spring tension preload I guess you would call it is exactly right and then we can start to adjust the clutch from there. And just to emphasize the point here, here I am operating the clutch lever and there's absolutely no movement of the spring pressure plate and that's because the new arrangement is so thick that the clutch rod can't actually reach the end of the pressure plate to move it and that's why we need to adjust it. Now inside here is a sleeve nut. We can adjust the sleeve nut so that there's less clearance between the rod and the actuating lever pulled by the clutch cable and that should be the way to cure this. So let's take off the Kickstarter case cover.
Now to decrease the clearance, we need to turn this into a, in an anti-clockwise direction. So we'll start with one turn. So that's half a turn. That's one full turn. Now we'll test the clutch. That wasn't sufficient, so we'll turn it more. Half a turn. And a full turn. Now we'll replace the cap. Now with that adjustment made, and operating the clutch lever, we get the movement that we need. And that's the course adjustment done. Now we'll do some fine adjustment once we get everything back together using the mechanism that screws into the gearbox. Now on this adjuster, to get more movement from the lever, to so disengage the clutch more promptly, we need to screw this out. So we undo the locking nut, and as we look at this, if we just turn it clockwise, it goes out a little bit, decreases the effective length of the cable, and then makes it taut. So just to recap on that, for a coarse adjustment of the clutch operating mechanism, we get into here. If we, the cable's too slack and the clutch isn't operating, then we turn that sleeve nut anti-clockwise until uh, it's nice and taut and operates the clutch. Minor adjustment on the cable is by using this here. You undo the locking nut. If you want to make the cable tauter, then what you do is you screw it um, clockwise as we look at it. So that goes out, increases the effective length of the sleeve, which tightens the cable. If you want to slacken the cable a little bit, undo the locking nut and then screw it anti-clockwise as we're looking at it. That brings it in and that makes the cable a little bit looser. And when you're finished, just nip up that bolt there. So that's coarse adjustment or major adjustment here, a minor adjustment here to make sure that we can engage and disengage the clutch. Now with the clutch adjusted, all that remains is to replace the outer chain case. There is of course a separate video for that. So I hope you found that useful. Uh, if you spotted any mistakes or you know a better way of doing it, then please get in touch. I will alter the video. And until then, I will leave you a summary of all the steps involved. Uh, good luck with your own work and ride safe.